Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're going to review the ride of the Bigode EX20S, as I call it, Empra. My favorite long distance cruising wheel to date. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. Quick notice before we get into the video, if you like Insta360 cameras, you are right now looking at a footage from the Insta360 ONE X2, then you're in luck if you want to get one. There's a sale going on with minus 10% off until June 4th. So feel free to use my affiliate link to additionally on top of the 10% off also get either a free selfie stick or some lens guards. All right, let's get into the beauty shots. First up, also big thanks to my e-wheel for providing me this wheel for testing purposes and possibly, should I get one? I'm really tempted, I, I just, it's just so comfy to ride on this wheel. Anyways, uh, first up maybe a little overview on this wheel. This is the Bigode EX20S, I call it the Emperor because, you know, there's the master, there's the hero. It should be, you know, the EX20S, it's, it's a bit out of order for me here. This is a suspension wheel and it is somewhat a first of its kind because it has suspension and it has a 3600 watt hour battery. So meaning this is the first long distance cruiser like a veteran Sherman, veteran Sherman Max or the Extreme Ball Commander. Until now we just have wheels with a maximum capacity of around 2000 or under 2000 watt hours and with the master 2400 watt hours. We have a C38 motor. It is a high torque configuration and ooh, a fully new design, which you can see outside of the case, the suspension mechanism, and there is tons of metal. If you want to see a bit more of the EX20S, check out my unboxing. Soon we'll make also a teardown and then it'll review. So there will be a playlist with all of the videos about the EX20S in the description below or in the pinned comment. The EX20S is also available in a high-speed configuration. However, as far as for my testing goes until now, I've put around 300 kilometers on this wheel. I wouldn't go for it. Like, even the torque on a high, high torque is so weak that it's possibly the worst performing Bigode 100-volt wheel. 
it's really that bad. <laughs> I'll go into that maybe a bit later, but as you can see here, I'm going through awful terrain. Awful! I would have lost three of my teeth here if I would be on my veteran Sherman, whilst on the EX20 or the Emperor, I'm feeling fairly good, like <laughs> no problems here. Uh, all right, so since in this video we're going to dive in a bit into the ride of this wheel, I guess it's no better time to do it than, than now. I love the ride of the EX20S and even compared to bigger wheels like the uh, Big Oat Monster, the Veteran Abrams, it still feels quite a bit lighter and nimbler for me. It also feels a ton more comfortable uh, than those non-suspension wheels. The problem is if you have a lot of weight, like on those bigger wheels, the more weight will be bouncing up and down if you go into a pothole. And in particular, having a heavier wheel with suspension is in my opinion the biggest benefit you can get from suspension because of this huge weight that is just bouncing up and down if you have a fixed axle. So with the Bigo DX20S I was doing a range test. It was 150 kilometers via darkness but I think around 140 via um, the GPS and I just didn't get tired and I was so happy that with this off-road tire and the suspension setup of the X20S, I could comfortably cruise through, you know, asphalt paths, which are not that perfect quality, like you can see here. And additionally, also through some more heavy terrain in forests and routes. It is not a casual off-roading wheel, in my opinion, like if you want to just do off-road. For once, it is a bit too heavy for that. And for twice, uh, the torque isn't just there. And as I said before, and I keep my, um, keep my word on that, maybe until there will be an update via Bigode, this is the worst performing wheel by Bigode that has 100 volts. I've been checking inclines and it, this wheel was struggling to get up a 35 degree incline, which is usually the case with high speed wheels by Bigode. Additionally, uh, the top speed here is, I guess, around 60 kilometers an hour, but I don't really reach that because my beeper is busted. So I put a tilt bag at around 52 and go maybe up to 55 if I really need the speed. So it's both slower and has less torque than a Sherman and probably even less than a veteran Sherman Max. But all of this doesn't take away from the experience, which is the Big O DX20S. It is really a, like, like usually in everyday situations, you won't encounter 35 degree inclines unless you are a off-road enthusiast. And even here going up hills, hello, going down hills, I don't have like any particular problem, even if it's like, looks scary. In terms of speed, this is the part where I would say this will will not age well because with the master and its 134 volt system i can't imagine how big o will just keep the master and a 100 volt wheel in its lineup and you know once i've tasted this performance of the master where i can have both the torque and the speed this wheel is really lacking in that department but I think that still the upsides of this wheel, which is its insane comfort and range, outweigh the Master and many other wheels in the right department as a long range cruiser. And just by default, a just really comfortable wheel to ride around. Right. 
what makes it so comfy? Well, first up, I think that the suspension is better than the Big O Master. I know that some of you might not agree with that, but from my testing, I've seen that the Master, and I'll maybe make a full-on comparison between those wheels. Maybe if we hit 2,000 likes on the video, then I'll make one. Um, on the Master, the suspension is quite linear, and I really need to put a lot of pressure in, in, into the damper to make it not bottom out too often when I'm riding. And still at super high pressure of 280 PSI, and I think this shock is rated up to 300, at least my pump is, um, I'm still bottoming out fairly often. And here I have 200 PSI and I think it's still just a bit too much. I'm an 80 kilogram rider with gear. Um, I'm not. And I feel like the suspension is more progressive. So the closer I get to bottoming out, the more difficult it is to do so. Or maybe there's just some sort of uh, blocking element on the bottom, which just doesn't clonk so hard as the master does. Uh, so with this wheel, I'm not that scared to go so down some stairs, and maybe we'll do that in this video too. Uh, but still, it's very comfortable, and it feels actually a bit more connected to the road. One thing I forgot to mention before, so that's why the setting of the video changes a bit is that the uh, suspension is also adjustable uh, you know with the pressure it's one thing but you also have rebound settings the rebound knob in the back so i was pr playing around with it uh, just a bit i was playing around with the knob and now i have set it up to have slower rebound because i just don't want to have this bounce in the when it when it extends that have it just a tiny bit uh, but I don't feel like that's the, that the knob works as much as on the big old master because then it goes like back really slow and here if I change it around I feel like there's not such a big difference but I feel that there is a difference so I'll work on that or I'll check that out a bit more when I stack more, more miles into the wheel and doesn't it just look super cool like come on it looks just so freaking cool and I gotta say that Bigode also nailed their algorithm or whatever software they're running on this wheel. There is no, pretty much no pedal dipping in turns and this is pretty much unheard of on Bigode wheels. It's rather perfect, like I have nothing to add here. The pedals stay flat, they don't go up, they don't go down and it's a lot better than on the Bigode Master. I'm really enjoying turning on this wheel because of the lack of pedal dipping. It's also super solid when accelerating or braking. So it's not like a veteran Sherman that just constantly dips down or up whether you accelerate or brake. The pedals stay really stiff. However, if you do over the power of the wheel, which is fairly possible, there won't be any beeps. It will just have a slight pedal dip or pedal tilt back if you brake too hard. So be aware of that. In general though, the wheel is very effortless and nice to ride. And the balance of it also makes it much nicer to carve around than the master. Um, I think that the tire choice here, I can't complain too much because I think what this wheel is, is like a globe trotter wheel. If you need like one wheel to go between cities, to go off-road, to make like 200 kilometer cruises with charging in between, then yes, this is better. And even if you want some chill riding uh, on a bicycle path, you can also do that. But what you can't do is have both the speed and the torque that you have on the Master. The seated riding experience is amazing. This is a, by far the best seated riding wheel, and I might sound like Mad Pack here, that I've ever, I've ever experienced. Because the seat is tailored towards your butt, so you're not falling off from the front or the back. It's really like a, you know, one of those analog unicycle seats. I have one, so I know how it looks like. The pads are also tailored here to your legs, so you still have like nice grip over the wheel even if you're seated, but of course it won't be that easy to accelerate or turn on it. So the reason I like the whole pad comfort setup here on the uh, Bigodi X20S is that here on the top everything is squishy, so here everything is comfy. The handle sometimes in the way, but mostly you're sitting on this, so that's comfy. Uh, you can set up the pads here with the screws. I have to know all the way to the front and that's what works. But you need to always wear some knee and or shin protection because here you always 
touch this and when I wasn't wearing that that I had a bruise on my shin um, I look like those lower pads too although they're like not jump pads but they keep you in place a bit so I might actually consider not changing the stock pads they're they're just good here I like the fact that the bumper here is also in the front it feels like a bit I don't know difficult maybe at times to keep the balance because the wheel just doesn't provide I mean the tire doesn't provide that much feedback in turns but still it's in my opinion at least the best for seat riding experience I've I've had and maybe this was also part of why I could make such a big range on the Bigode EX20S I could just you know power through with less wind resistance um, oh here oh. So that, that's the lack of, of torque. Can't this one I'm on the master. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Did I crash the lens? Now, yes. And the distance between your feet and your ass is bigger than when you're seated on the master. So, and, and you have also this like additional bulge here in the, in the front. Yes, a bulge. We go designed a very nice bulge which makes you like grip the wheel a lot better. Of course, the only thing that is missing here, and I really miss that, is a screen. I think it's also the only wheel where I can just like easily sit down even without holding the front of the wheel. All right, now let's talk maybe a bit about the weight, which is, I guess, the elephant in the room. Literally, because this wheel is an elephant. It weighs 49 kilograms, but as I'm testing it, it doesn't really feel that bad in terms of just the sheer weight of it. I feel like I can accelerate on it fairly easily. And when it comes to like just turns and like carving, I actually do it more often on the Emperor than I do it on the Master. I like how it turns. I like the, I don't know, subtle maybe, nimbleness of it. And I think that the 20 inch tire is really probably the best choice for such a wheel. I mean we don't have this um, inertia effect at higher speeds that the wheel keeps me like super stable and straight it's like difficult it's more difficult to make turns but I actually prefer that it's just a bit like more seamless and easy to ride with it and in general even with the weight of this wheel with the HT motor this wheel is quite um, nice to ride so it is a new generation wheel uh, with I think a better suspension than uh, the uh, Bigode Master, but at the same time the um, torque of it and the performance isn't, so I think it'll be just a matter of time until the EX20S will be replaced by a EX200S or whatever naming scheme they come up with next. I don't want to make any conclusions about purchase decisions because this will be also an integra integral part of my teardown and uh, my final review of this wheel where I will share all the details, the safety about the uh, Big O, the EX20S. But as far as it, it is for now, uh, when it comes to the ride of this wheel, it could be just my favorite ride in terms of getting from point A to point B with no nonsense, great comfort, great safety, because you know you won't get just uh, thrown off by a pothole and you can ride seated without being you know, thrown off the wheel. So yeah, long range wheels, my favorite ride. So with that, with that said, if you're still here, okay, um, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. And finally, I found a nice staircase. Let's do it. Whee! Ooh, that didn't feel nice. That didn't feel nice. Okay, so still not a staircase wheel.